Hi everyone, my name's Jake, and today we're going to talk about Doki Doki Literature Club. Now, if you haven't played it yet, stop this video and go play it. It's free, it's on Steam, and it takes about four hours. And please, take the trigger warning seriously. So all of us are cool with spoilers? Alright, good. So, here's the theory. Monica's piano has a bigger role in the game than is immediately obvious. I believe that the piano in the game's soundtrack is Monica's presence. It means that when piano is audible in the music, Monica is watching your screen or involved in the events taking place. We already know that Monica is omnipresent, but it was the absence and special effects on the piano in certain scenes that led me to this theory, so let's get into it. First off, let's quickly establish the piano. When looking at the girl's poems, the music transitions into a variation based on the girl. Sayori's is a more carefree version with ukulele and snaps. Natsuki's is a childlike version with xylophone and recorder. And Yuri's is a more sophisticated version with strings, harps, and flute. Monica's is solo piano. Nobody else has piano in their themes. Next, on the day when Monica is late to the club, she says she was practicing piano and that she only started recently. When Sayori says that she should play something for us, Monica looks at you. She then says that she's been practicing a whole lot recently. So from this conversation, I get the impression that the piano we hear in the soundtrack is her practicing. She only started recently, like when we started playing the game, and she has been practicing a whole lot recently. I mean, the piano is all over the soundtrack, so yeah. And she looks at you, because she's already been playing for us. We just haven't realized it. So, notice how in the bonding scenes with the girls, the piano takes the forefront. This is because Monica is paying extra close attention. And we know that she's paying attention, because she tells us that she knows everything that happened in Sayori's room. It's a pretty clever subversion, considering that gentle piano is so cliché when it comes to emotional or romantic scenes. And again, when we find Sayori dead, the piano is present. Monica is watching to figure out what to do next. As for the piano playing after we delete Monica's file, bits and pieces of her are still in the game. She's sentient and not completely gone, so she decides to play along with the soundtrack since she doesn't want to truly leave us. It's actually pretty clever foreshadowing for that final confrontation Monica has with Sayori at the very end. Now the piano shows up in special ways in other scenes based on Monica's involvement. Now this one is actually what really cemented this theory for me. When Natsuki starts to glitch, only the piano melody is distorted. Everything else is normal, but Monica's tampering with the script to make Natsuki less desirable. I don't think it has to happen every time the script is distorted, but this instance indicates Monica's tampering with Natsuki that sends her off the rails. Once Yuri starts to be tampered with, the effects are a little more drastic. Monica worries that Yuri is more desirable than Natsuki, so she has to make a bigger effort to increase her obsessive behavior and make her unlikable. So Monica is more involved in Yuri's downfall. The poem music here is not Yuri's music, but instead a distorted version of the previous music, which prominently features piano. As we go on, we have this piano track being reversed. And finally, Yuri's death has a distorted, muffled piano. Monica was trying very hard to completely ruin Yuri. Now let's look at some absences of piano. The first that brings attention to itself is the fight between Yuri and Natsuki. This track has no piano, and afterwards, Monica says she wasn't able to interject. Maybe this is because she doesn't fully understand her powers yet, or she wanted to let the situation get out of control. It's vague. This music does return later, but Monica is on screen this time, so she's already involved. I think it's important to remember that when a character isn't on screen, they literally don't exist. They're not currently scripted into the scene, and aren't aware until the code calls them back. This is why this absence of piano is so crucial. It means if Monica is not on screen, she's not watching for whatever reason. Another example of this is at the very beginning of the game. 
When Sayori needs you to go to school, there's no piano here, and maybe this is because Monica isn't aware yet, or she hasn't met you yet so she doesn't need to spy on you. It's not until we actually meet Monica that the piano starts showing up in the soundtrack. And finally, the most effective use of absence is the morning of Sayori's suicide. There's no music at all, but this is because Monica's work is already done. Sayori is dead, so Monica has nothing to worry about. She only needs to wait for you to discover Sayori's body so she can relax. We never see a piano, or Monica practicing piano, because the piano sprite isn't in the game. It was never coded in. It's only the audio. And by the time Monica was able to create her own world, the script was broken enough that trying to code in a piano could ruin everything. She even wants to play some nice piano for you. But it doesn't work because the code is so messed up. The piano doesn't return in the soundtrack until the game is completely broken, where she isn't afraid to play again since everything is ruined anyways. So that's the theory. It doesn't change Doki Doki Literature Club in any mind-blowing way, but it's another layer on top of this already dense experience. Let me know your thoughts in the comments, and don't forget to like this video if you enjoyed it. I'm surprised how into this game I got, considering how I nearly gave up on it in the first couple of hours, and I'm happy to see so many people enjoying it. Anyways, I hope you have a great day, and I'll see you next time. Bye!